Welcome to this episode of High Performance Business and Habit Building. I am your host, Leah Fish, founder of CEO Rise, where we focus on entrepreneurs, employees, and students, giving them all they need to choose their most effective way of productivity. We are speaking today, we have the honor to be speaking today with Marta Bukowska, who is going to share uh, her story that I think will be inspirational to those of us who, hashtag everyone, don't necessarily have things go the way we planned. Marta, good morning. Great to have you on the show. Good morning, Leia. So honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so we were talking a bit before the show and, and you were sharing kind of your perception um, back in the day before your decisions in your life kind of turned into what it is, um, your perceptions of what freedom was and, and then how things changed and how you worked with that. So give us a little bit of the, the story. Okay, freedom for me is the highest value. It's my highest value has been forever, since teenage years. I flew out of my house in Eastern Europe when I was 17, traveled the world, ended up in New York City, loved it. Uh, I always felt that freedom comes from uh, making choices independently of circumstances, not being tied to a person, to a place, to geography, to, you know, place where you came from, language. I, I actually always felt that I was a citizen of the universe, of the whole world, and none of the cultural backgrounds were there to limit me. So that's what's freedom to me, uh, just doing what I want, despite where I came from, what language I speak, Mm -hmm. where I live, how old I am, Mm -hmm. am I a woman, a man, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's it's mine to embrace. Yes. And, And although it's funny, we have sort of a similar kind of background up until a certain point, because I certainly, I lived in New York, I'm from New Jersey, but I travel and then I traveled the world lived in New York kept traveling you know and so everyone was like you're so free you're so free and you know it's really easy to be like in air quotes free when you're a single person traveling the world but you were talking about kind of like realizing that then there's another level or other levels of freedom when you don't have that obvious you know no responsibility is is kind of or not no responsibility but no kind of external responsibilities is is sort of to me the lightest form of freedom you know yes the lowest hanging fruit right the <laughs> the path of least least resistance yeah i have yes i i don't belong to anyone anywhere i'm free yeah no schedule no people expecting things from you right but that's kind of like you know that's sort of the freedom of of i mean some people follow that through for a long time. But when we do, as you did, uh, ended up having a child and then another child, you were able to really kind of stick with that um, commitment to freedom, but in a different, in a different way. So tell us about that. Yes, I grew a lot through my experiences as a parent. Uh, My initial belief about parenthood, uh, about being a mom was that this is going to limit my ability to show up as a business owner, my ability to show up as creative human, my ability to travel, to, to just Be yeah, to live, yeah, live like beyond any of these societal expectations. Uh, so I I think I gave in to that limitations to the limiting belief with my first child for sure like I just felt my wings were clipped clipped and I felt uh happy I love being a mother I it's a beautiful experience but it was an experience that limited me because of my perception of that 
Mm. Now I know because of my perception that being a mother means you're going to act a certain way. You're going to surround yourself with certain people. You're going to do certain things. Uh, it was, yeah, I put that perfectionist kind of like, you know, mm. what I saw around me, like, this is what it means to be mother. You're going to be this now. You're going to act like this and do things like this and so on. And you were saying you, you thought that you never even wanted to have children. Um, I, yes, I've never, and when I say this, I, I don't want to say I like, I did not want to have children, but I just didn't have that desire. It was kind of like, oh, you know, if it happens, it happens. I'm open to it, but not something I was pursuing. Mm -hmm. I was not pursuing having children. Uh, uh, I had my first one at 29. My husband of that time really wanted to have children. And I just, it was, it was easy. It happened. I, I agreed to that and happened and it was beautiful. But again, like kind of, I was like almost <laughs> the, 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 the party that showed up. And I said, okay, I'm open. Let's see what happens. But I'm not going to influence this in any way. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But it happened. You know, it's so interesting that you um, you had this perception, you know, like the, the number one thing for you was freedom. And you were like, most probably children interfere with that. And then you were in a, in a situation with your, your husband at the time who really wanted children. And then once the child came, kind of you turned yourself over to other people you know you had kind of not, not completely you were open to it but you turned yourself over to his desire and then once you were in that position of motherhood you turned yourself over to other people's perceptions but really they were all initiating with you that's the funny thing it was the freedom to turn yourself over to your husband's desire the freedom to turn yourself over to other people's perceptions of what motherhood was but then how funny that you took that and started to constrict yourself of like perfectionism. It's got to be like this. It's got to be like that. When it sounds like those things weren't really, you know, those concepts weren't even really initiated by you. You were taking these things on by, by other people from other people. Oh my goodness. I mean, you, <laughs> you, you said it, that is so true. And as I was speaking about my experiences, I was like, wow, I was not really, uh, not initiating anything. I wasn't being in charge here. I just <laughs> let it happen and <laughs> embraced it through other people's perceptions of how it should be. Uh, where's the freedom here? <laughs> well, but at the same time, it was, you know, it's, I, I saw this great um, quote just last night and it said, I don't remember who said the quote, but it said, what you aren't changing, you are choosing. And I was like, ooh, and it said, read that again, you know, kind of yes. a thing. Um, and it's, it's um, and you know, I mean, 29 isn't a baby, but it's still kind of, you know, on the youthful side, especially if people around us, you know, around, when I was 29, most of my friends didn't have children. Um, so it wasn't like you could look at what, you know, cool, independent 29 year olds maybe were doing. And so we just kind of surrendered. So how long did it take for you to feel that you kind of found your footing um, and felt that that freedom that was so important to you after your first child was born? So it took probably about five years, five years of finding myself and redefining myself and and understanding that working through this limited perception I had of motherhood was actually freedom. It was freeing. So, so, mm -hmm. but it, 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 there was a lot of resistance there, a lot back and forth and just like forcing and, and, and there was no defining moment. It's just the slow process of coming to understanding, uh, this is what I have. This is what I'm working with. Let me make the best out of it. Let me find my freedom in this situation that screams lack of freedom to me based on my previous uh, mm -hmm. persona uh, because it's really limiting me. It is limiting me. And so were you able to do, you know, the kind of things that you were talking about of being free to travel and did you find that you were able to do that with a child or that you weren't? 
not with my first one, not till he was around nine years old. That's when it took off for me. And, and some of this was circumstantial. I, I went through a divorce and, and started my own business. And it was just a lot of uh, moving pieces. But by the age of nine, I got myself back to traveling by the age of nine for my son, to traveling, uh, to just living my life uh, with more freedom in honoring my values, right? Honoring, honoring the values that, uh, that really matter for me. And, and I believe that this also installed those values in my now teenager son. I, I always wanted to have a child that will feel free. Mm. Uh, and uh, I must model that, right, to my child. I can't <laughs> be so restricted by the society, by the uh, expectations, by the cultural um, visions of others uh, if I want my child to, to be free. And you mentioned growing up you know, in Eastern Europe, what, what do you think, you know, whether it was your family or your culture of origin, what do you think the perception was of freedom that, you know, you were surrounded by that had it become such a, you know, I saw this great, um, someone I, I'm friends with on Facebook, and she said, my whole life is a trauma response. And I, it sounds kind of extreme, but I, you know, in many ways, so many of the things we choose, whether they're trauma responses, but they're often responses, you know, I became a professional organizer because myself and my whole family were very, very cluttered. So I was always thinking like, how can I get out of, you know, and that became the, the foundation of, of the work that I do. Um, and it came from kind of the opposite, right? So do you think freedom is something that was valued by your family, by your culture, or was something that, that wasn't, and it was something that you were seeking? It was definitely not valued by, my, by obviously, my, the culture and the system I grew up in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, we were behind the, the Berlin Wall for till I was almost 13, but also... I grew up with my mom, I'm the only child, and there was, um, I realize it now, many years after, that there was a big level like of control coming from my mom because there were just two of us. And I think in many ways, uh, you know, I was the only child, I was the safety, the safety, the, the, the only person that my mom had. My mom never remarried after divorcing uh, my dad. Uh, and I was controlled. So if we speaking of trauma response, I realized that me leaving my house so early was a trauma response, it was a trauma response to not wanting to be controlled mm. anymore. Uh, and I didn't know that at that time. I actually didn't know that till my like mid thirties, that it mm. was a trauma response, the, the mm -hmm. seeking of freedom till I started communicating with my mom and more on that grown-up level and I started noticing the the patterns and and how you know and I knew at that moment oh my gosh this was not just seeking freedom this was not adventure that I also <laughs> loved in my life this was in a way <laughs> escaping uh from pain right or running towards pleasure but maybe more escaping from pain mm, mm. and yeah it's it's when we look at things I, I see that so much more as as I as I mature um that the things like we were talking about that that low-hanging fruit freedom which may actually even be trauma response freedom um which may not you know on paper it looks like oh young beautiful girl travels the world when in fact it's like uh you know, young, beautiful girl wants to escape controlling mother <laughs> and escape as soon as possible. You know, it, there, there's different ways to, to you know, portray the narrative. Um, but what I found for myself is that, you know, certainly these elements of, of freedom and fulfillment and um, satisfaction and all of the things that even perception of, you know, right and wrong that as I get older, I see that that it's much harder to define 
these things, you know, I, I become much less black and white and, and that's intentional, but as I age, because I see, you know, that there's at least two ways to tell the story, if not 200 ways to tell the story, right? And, um, and so a lot of our, um, you know, values, we can start to find these in much more subtle, nuanced ways, you know, from we have freedom in, in the cup of, in, in the coffee cup that we choose. Every decision we make is, you know, we are blessed, us to on this radio show, we're blessed to have the opportunity to make our own decisions, uh, thankfully. Um, and that in itself is a freedom which many people, whether because of disabilities or, um, being incarcerated or having to care for people that rely on them heavily, that they are, you know, caretaker. Not everyone has these levels, these, and, and there's so many internal levels that when we can start to probe and really identify around us, wow, we are infused with whatever the value is, if it's beauty, if it's freedom, if it's community, you know, it's the, at first blush, we say, well, I don't have that. So I have to do the extreme to get that. And then once we have that, we say, well, it doesn't have to be quite that extreme, perhaps. Right. And, and so, so beautiful. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that is so true. It's, it's, it's really, you know, you've, and this is my biggest discovery with my second child uh, that's still not a toddler. He's five, but I still consider him a toddler. Uh, and then we find freedom actually in those things that we thought were the biggest obstacles of freedom, right? If we are able to be present, walk through them, experience them, feel them, that is our freedom in these small moments that that we felt so much resistance to. And, and this is really where, where my freedom sits in in the most like conscious way. Of course, I still love the, the travel and the you know spontaneity and, and all these uh, superficial freedom expressions, mm -hmm. but the freedom really sits in in knowing that I don't have childcare for the day and I am going to put myself in the energetic state where it's okay and I will flow through my day and show up as my best self instead of spending a day resisting the, the lack of freedom, right? And that is the freedom. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have found, I mean, I have two, I, I also call them toddlers. Um, uh, in two days, they'll be turning five and three. And um, it, I, I've, I found that, speaking of freedom and I always think about freedom and power um, going together and that, and that I, you know, feel at, at times completely, you know, <laughs> powerless and like I lose it. And I say to myself, I'm free to make a different choice in this moment to like zip it, to look at what I want to give to my children, which is not <laughs> a mother who's like screaming, you know, it's, it's really challenging sometimes, a lot of times. Um, but when we, when we are really committed to the gift of our freedom, we have to also, I think, honor that and say, well, um, even if our natural inclination is to respond a certain way, if we're truly committed to our freedom, we get to make a different choice. And that's, that's the thing I say to my clients all the time is, you know, yes, and you get to make a different choice. And I think in a lot of ways that can be the hardest thing is we feel like we can't make a different choice. Like in that moment, we can't. You know, it's so blank, it's so frustrating, it's so angry, it's so scary. It's, you know, we feel like we can't make a different choice. And, and you know, I actually studied existentialism in, in college. And one of the things Sartre says, uh, the father of existentialism, Jean-Paul Sartre, and he says that, you know, when we confront our ultimate, our ultimate freedom, we are struck with a sense of vertigo that it's, it's too much to bear. And yeah. so we go through our lives, you know, to use your word, clipping our freedom, like clipping it everywhere we can. And we say, I'm a waiter, I'm a mother and all, and we take on all the things that come with that. 
when in fact our ultimate freedom is so pure and vast, it's almost unfathomable. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is so true. And, and isn't it like, it, it's almost like the energetic quality, right? The freedom, because we, we cling to that, to the physical quality of freedom, right? But if we can embrace it on an energetic level, it takes us places that are really free. Yeah. So how would you say um, that raising your second child, uh, you know, 17 years, or I guess 12 years later, uh, when you had your, your second child, now that you were in a different situation with a different husband, how did you notice your, your experience of motherhood being different since you had kind of layered ever since your son was nine, your first son, what, what differences did you note within yourself, within your choices, how you lived your life now that you had a second child? The awareness, the awareness of, of my trauma responses to motherhood. Mm. I think that was, uh, that's the biggest difference. And, and just to share you how this uh, manifests itself on that very tactile, physical level, uh, we actually living, me and my little five-year-old, not a toddler, a little boy, <laughs> we are living um, for Costa Rica in less than two weeks. Uh, to spend about two, three months over there. Um, that has been my dream for a long time, to spend extended time in Costa Rica, working from there, not just vacationing. And uh, I am making it happen. We, we are going to go. He's going to go to school there. Uh, my husband will visit here and there. And uh, I'm doing it. I'm not sure <laughs> yet how. But I am, it feels so free and liberating to, to bring this dream to my life uh, that I've had for about six years before he was born, actually. I, mm -hmm. I said to myself, once my teenager graduates from high school, I am going to go to Costa Rica and live there a little bit longer and work from there and experience the country, experience the culture. And uh, for a second, I thought, oh, wow, this is not going to happen now because I am a mom again to a little child. And then I said, no, I'm going to make it happen. We're mm -hmm. going. So that's like on, a, on that very physical level, this is how my awareness of this like autopilot responses I have towards motherhood, that it's a limitation, I am able to correct them mm. and, and really shift this would not be possible for me with my first child. I know it because I would just accept the first thought for what it is. Mm. And now I question it. Yeah. And I, I, this sort of, you sort of have answered it, but I always like to conclude our, our interviews with kind of a tactile, you know, for someone listening to this show who may be in a situation where they feel unfree, right? For whatever reason, they may be, you know, God forbid, literally unfree. They may be circumstantially in a situation that is not of their choosing. Um, what would you say to them um, kind of along the lines of what we've been talking about? Um, you know, we have the luxury of freedom to process and to do personal development and to have our own businesses and travel. And, you know, um, your husband will visit from time to time. Many, many couples wouldn't accept something like that, right? And so, what would you say to someone who is listening to this and maybe is in a situation where they don't feel free and they, that's really a value that they want to feel. And they feel that, that frustration of, of not freedom. Hmm. I would say, start questioning, start questioning those, those autopilot responses, those, uh, those recurring thoughts that you have, uh, really go deeper and, and ask yourself, is this really true in my life? Am I really not free right now? Is this really limiting me the way I think it's limiting me? So mm -hmm. that has been the biggest change in my life. I think that I started really questioning the thoughts I had, that my mindset behind it. I, I 
And through this, I grew my business for the first time to six figures. I traveled the most. I, I showed up most unapologetically as a mother, as a woman, and, and really, but it, it took courage. It took courage. It took a lot of questioning. It took just going deep. But that's, I think the freedom comes from this, that you're not going to take your answers, your reactions, at the face value, you are going to ask one more question and one more question and one more question and then take one step, one step, one step and see how it feels. I love that. Marta Bukowska, thank you so much. I think this is great advice to come back to over and over again throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, the year, the years, the decades of asking just one more question. Is that really true? Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom uh, with myself and with our audience. And it's been truly a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a pleasure, Leah. Thank you for having me. Have a beautiful day. You too.